Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, um, yeah. In fact, uh, what uh, I did uh, w with this presentation, and I put uh, the materials in the conference page, and hopefully this will help me to drive my ride in the community and try to convince the people there is to compare the different tools we have. I mean, the idea of Minilang, it was not bad. It was 10 years ago, so with different technology, different uh, tools we could have at that time. And David put together a tool that was good for writing procedural code like ERP business logic, and it was good for that. Uh, but the choice of doing this in XML was not really good. Probably at that time we didn't have much uh, uh, options. So for many years I used to enjoy playing with the Minilang, but I, I used to joke with David and uh, used to say that David and I were the only one that enjoyed in the world. Uh, any other developer we met was, oh God, what's this shit? <laughs> Are they recording this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, so yeah, uh, um, but if you look, at, in fact, what I put together is a service implemented in Java and Minilang and then with this DSL, exact same logic, and actually the difference is uh, huge. I mean, the Java version has some advantages, the Minilang version has other nice features, but some disadvantages that are huge and are really difficult, and when you have to deal with the debugging or, yeah doing yeah. computation of math, arithmetic on data, it's meaningless, it's awful. When you have to call another ma Java method or a static or instance method, it's silly. Yeah. It's uh, mostly impossible. Yeah, well, so. it seems like Groovy is kind of a nice compromise between the two. It's nice and easy and you don't have to you know, restart the app every time something changes. So. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because, Mike, uh, when you, I mean, if you are writing a Java code that, uh, for example, connects with a server and uh, you get a network, ex I mean, a connection exception, you are happy to deal with that exception. When you're writing business logic code like uh, invoices, you don't have to, you, you can't, you, you are, I mean, your brain is not, uh, putting en attention and energy on uh, the DB connection issues or uh, exception thrown by services. I mean, it's a completely different concept where you don't want to have to. Yeah. Yeah, and in fact, uh, what, uh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, and the, another advantage of Groovy is that you, you can build a, like a simple DSL on top of it and pretend that it's like Minilang, so you, don't, you probably mm, write some code that may look like uh, <laughs> yeah, something that a business user may be able to, this is a prom promise of a DSL languages that business user can type their own code. I mean, I don't think this will ever happen <laughs> because, uh, yeah, uh, I read, uh, a good book about DSL implementing different languages. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, okay, they are cool. You can write uh, things like this that uh, seems like a pretty natural way of doing, but you can easily mess up things if you don't know exactly what you are doing. So it's still a development task. But uh, if you can be focused on that, it's great. And you can write some code that is very, very similar to I mean, uh, you can just focus on the business logic part, but the advantage of, of Groovy is that uh, you still have the delegator dispatcher object at your disposal, and you can yeah, switch you back can to them if you need. To, to and you can do it, of course. Yeah. 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 And at that point, uh, you have the same power of a Java uh, mm, uh, method. So yeah, I mean, I think we should uh, consider this. Of course, the DSL would have to grow. Right now, it's just a prototype with a few methods. I, I intentionally kept it small 
just because you still can use the delegator if you need to do something special, but I wanted to show that you can really do some, the, the mini lang operation in a groovy, in a better language and most modern, more modern stuff. So, yeah, at this point, I'll just show you the three services. So, I have implemented, uh, okay, the business logic it is, uh, we get a product ID. If the product uh, doesn't exist, we return an error. Uh, then we select uh, all the facilities pro uh, associated to the product, and for each of them, uh, we count the units available in inventory. We sum them up, and we also persist at this value on the product facility record back. Just to, so this is very simple, but I did this because it does the two, uh, uh, two entity selection, one for a record, one for a list, uh, and then two service call and some arithmetic operation. So it was a good example of everything. I've tried to not... Uh, cheat too much, <laughs> so the code here is not perfect intentionally, but also not uh, useful. I didn't try, like in some books, uh, they do comparison between two languages and show the most useful, the most uh, horrible programming for the language that they want to replace and a beautiful one. So here is uh, something in the middle. But yeah, when you do Java services, you have to deal with uh, all this signature that is kind of distracting when you're writing business logic. Yeah, so yeah, uh, and then uh, yes, you, uh, okay, in Java you have to get a delegate, uh, reference to the delegator dispatcher, you get uh, the user login that is needed to, to call services, and then you have all these uh, API calls that you know pretty well, and you have to try get uh, blocks. When you, when you um, write them, um, Strings, you have to concatenate uh, stuff if you need to. Uh, and uh, you have to pass the user login, the service call here. The math is pretty simple. Okay, Java is pretty good at this. Uh, another interesting aspect is that when you write a Java service versus an event, you have to deal with different uh, um, like mechanism or API, for example. Uh, a successful event, you have to return a string that says success. For a successful service, you have to return a map with the success token inside plus the, and the, the error, uh, the messages that you want to deliver uh, for an event are stored in, the, in a request uh, with a particular key or list. Uh, in the service, they are in the map, result map. Uh, so you have to do different uh, things if you are doing these uh, different things. In Minilang, it's slightly better. You just use the same entity operation and the framework will understand if you are in, in, a, in the context of an event or, or in the context of a service and will populate the proper uh, data structure. This is kind of neat. And in fact, uh, I have uh, implemented the same in the Minilang DSL. So for example, in Minilang DSL, I'll show you here, an example. This is pretty simple. I don't know if it, you can see it. This success. So uh, this is a groovy uh, class. So the idea of def here is that we don't specify the output uh, uh, of the, the return value of this uh, method. And in fact, uh, and in fact uh, we return uh, in, if uh, we are in the, if you are running an event, we return the success string. If you are running a service, we return a result uh, map. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, if we have a message, the message is optional, so you can just call success in the parentheses, and it will return the success string if it's an event. If you specify a message, it will add it with the proper key to the, to the. Uh, request, 
uh, and uh, yeah, for services, it will populate the, the result map. So you can really write the same code, mostly the same code, because there are some exceptions. For example, if you have to return something that is like uh, the output uh, attributes of a service, at that point, uh, it's clearly different. So you'll have to add it to the result map. But uh, yeah, you can do some things transparently. And uh, yeah, this is Minilang, same, uh, same service in Minilang. Uh, <laughs> so, so here the nice thing is that uh, you don't have to get dispatcher delegator object. You don't have to, uh, I mean, uh, the idea was that you don't have to specify framework level stuff like dispatch context, context. In fact, there, are, there, there isn't anything in the simple method element like this. But uh, still, XML looks uh, ugly, <laughs> so it's really bad. Uh, in, in fact, the, the simple method just has the method name and the description that is optional, so it's pretty clear. I mean, uh, unfortunately, it's in XML, so it's not clear, and especially when you are, are opening a, s a source code and, and you want to see, uh, yeah, read some business logic, XML is really not the right tool that you expect to use. And uh, yeah, this is an entity one, what you mentioned before, an entity end operation. This is a, yeah, this is a nice thing of a, a Minilang that I um, used in uh, the DSL that you can, uh, yeah, embed uh, variables inside of uh, strings. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And, we, and we luckily, Groovy has the same feature with the G-string support. So, so this is nice thing that we have also in the new DSL. So really, I wanted to, what my, yeah, the, the attempt was to create not a complete DSL, but something that could clearly be better than Minilang. And at this point, uh, you don't have to learn a new language. Uh, you will not uh, have to learn a new language uh, when you meet OF bits. Uh, that is one of the reasons that people don't like Minilang because uh, you yeah, have to learn something brand new. Uh, and uh, yeah, and also like this. This is a <laughs> arithmetic operation just to increment a variable running total yeah. uh, like this. Uh, yeah, this is a nice feature, field to result. It works for events and for services in the same way. So this is what I mentioned earlier. So there are a lot of uh, good ideas here, but uh, they are very old, and uh, in my opinion, it's uh, time to use some new technology. And in fact, uh, yeah, this is the same version of the, uh, of the implementation in Groovy. Uh, you just have to provide a, uh, the name of the service that has to match the service definition, no arguments. So it's uh, very easy. And then you, exactly as in Minilang, you start immediately with the with um, business logic. You don't have to fetch delegator dispatcher objects that are available, by the way. And yeah, you do all the stuff, you inline uh, the variables. Uh, the, you don't have to pass this uh, user login it's automatically retrieved from the context and put in the context in, servi in service uh, calls. Uh, you, we can see it uh, happening, I think, uh, here. It's uh, pretty simple, but uh, here we get, uh, we get the user login and uh, we pass it to the call. And uh, And yeah, here is what I mentioned. When we do this, we just, uh, uh, in the context of a service, we get a result map back. Otherwise, we would have simply uh, received a string if we were in, a, in an event. Here we have to add also the, this uh, attribute that is uh, differentiate this. Bar. But in Confluence, I did an example of a service that could be also uh, be used as an event, and the code is exactly the same. So if you provide a service definition, it is a service. If you use it in the controller as an event, it will work exactly the same. But I cheated a little bit because uh, th that service didn't have an output parameter. 
so it could work. But actually, events don't have output parameter apart from the fact that you can add that to the re response object, which is could be a good thing, nice thing to do. <laughs> good idea. <laughs> uh, and yeah, math is simple. So yeah, and uh, and yeah, as I mentioned before, uh, Mike, these are probably ideas from you, so I have to thank you. But uh, yeah, I was trying to think about a better way of doing this. So what I did was is exactly like an API, very simple API. So, and then I tried to think, uh, to implement something of what you suggested. So one could be this, uh, uh, like uh, injecting the string class, uh, uh, find one with, that this was an example, for a find with that returns a list, uh, or execute with that will run as a service. Or like this, that is probably more in line with what you told me that time at the phone, where we have fine product by ID. So the by ID method will take fine product, will cut the first part, understand that this is the method, uh, that it is a request for find one uh, similar operation. This is the entity the, the definition. So we will uh, run a find one operation on the product entity with this uh, ID. And similarly, with the find products, uh, we'll cut the S and remove the find, uh, and we'll run find uh, list on the product and similarly execute create product will cut execute will lowercase c and run uh, on the dispatcher create product so this is the idea of this uh, uh, api could could be nice i show two example where you can remove the dot uh, but really <laughs> really it's um and this is another one that uh, yeah this is the one actually that uh, I showed you earlier, uh, where we use, still use the, we start with an API method, but we also inject uh, a method on the, this is a more complicated one, but still easy to implement. Uh, I probably like it uh, most, just because, uh, yeah, it's uh, in the right order. I mean, uh, execute, create product with parameters. I mean, uh, me as a developer, I probably prefer the, the existing one just because I think it's easy. Like find one because it's similar to what we use too. Right, right. So, but it uh, could be a nice idea, this one, especially uh, as I mentioned, if we can run uh, like this. So this doesn't even look like uh, a Java program. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, I think the same. Um, so yeah, this is the main uh, idea. And uh, um, actually, um, uh, yeah, also Java, we use it for services and events. We don't use Java for data preparation script. I mean, uh, when you prepare uh, data for a screen, mm -hmm. we typically use Groovy, plain Groovy. We, I think in OFBIT there are no example of Java being used to prepare data for a script, for a screen or, so, so really right now in OFBIT you have to learn, okay, they are same, same, but Java and Groovy, if you follow the best practices. With Minilang, in theory you could do everything because you can write services, you can write uh, events, and you can write data preparation script, even if uh, in Minilang data preparation script, you have a subset of uh, operation available. But uh, Minilang is limited per se. You can write all the code you want with Minilang. So this is the main limit. With this Groovy DSL, you can actually do everything. You can do services, events, and data preparation script. Uh, for data preparation script, there is, uh, I still have to commit the code. I have a patch that is attached to the page. Uh, Indoor is testing it. The, the guy at, uh, in India are testing it right now, but uh, as I was expecting, there may be some performance issues just because uh, I, uh, uh, it, uh, they are related to them. Some class loader that I create, uh, I mean, and it's a problem uh, finding the right spot where I, just, uh, I have to inject the base class for the script, uh, for the Groovy script. Uh, and for screens, uh, there are, I mean, uh, 
I, I found the right place to put it, but it's, uh, there is a dependency between components that prevents me from doing this. So I had to place in a, a, a higher level, and this causes some, head, um, yeah, some additional work because uh, every time you execute a script, you, you have to create a groovy class loader. And when we test it with the uh, JMeter, we, we experience some uh, performance issues. So yeah, this has to be fixed. Uh, then uh, yeah, I would like to finalize the um, DSL, test it a lot because uh, yeah, there are just a few methods already implemented with it, I think in the uh, special purpose component. Uh, and then uh, discuss with the community the idea of using it uh, a lot. And then we could uh, start migrating some old code to it. And at that point, it will be a good test case because we will learn a lot. Uh, but yeah, uh, my only... Thank you. Oh, there are me. We, uh, so right now we are writing uh, all the new uh, ECRP six science uh, code using this. So no more Minilang. Uh, and we are using this for services event and data preparation scripts. But for data preparation script, we had some issue. We didn't experience any performance uh, issues with, uh, of course there is a, I mean, uh, using Groovy is less efficient than uh, uh, Java. There is a little overhead that you have to, but yeah, we couldn't measure it. I mean, I think in, in the OFBits context, uh, uh, the big uh, the, uh, overhead is caused by the access to the database. And uh, this is, I think, where, uh, yeah, that, that part uh, hides uh, the overhead caused by, yeah. The additional layer in the groovy scripting in general, I think. I mean, we couldn't uh, measure a difference in performance in running a service in Java versus a service in groovy, but yeah. Yeah, that is definitely true. In fact, um, also I like the idea of, uh, I mean, uh, mm, uh, having a system, uh, OFBit is a Java-based framework. I like the idea of using something that is uh, very similar to Java and not go to in a total different, totally different direction. So I think it could uh, be well sold if uh, you say, okay, if you are, the, are a Java developer, if your team, if your company has a team developing Java code, you will be very comfortable with the OFBit because it will be Java and Groovy. And there will be some API that we'll have to learn. This could be a good um, marketing message <laughs> also. Uh, I know that, uh, but if we have, uh, yeah, dozens of scripts in Minilang, you'll still have to deal with them <laughs> for your lifetime unless we will start migrating. And I think we should really, because we can't have, every time there is something new in OFBits, leave all the old stuff as a layer back. And uh, yeah, migrating it would be a good uh, thing, in my opinion, even if uh, it will take some time. Yeah. But if we will have new commuters coming in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm not uh, looking for, uh, uh, 
development time. Uh, Uh, oh, I think that some of the fixes may have gone to the trunk already. Some of them, I'm sure not. And it would be good uh, experiment. Also, we should talk about uh, the idea of migrating to the newer release. If you, I think it would be beneficial for general staying up to date for you for the company. Uh, even if uh, it could be also, yeah, not uh, to not not super easy task, but it. Uh, I mean, I think it would be important at least to go to the thirteen or seven. It's, uh, yeah, uh, should be pretty stable version. Now in Otwax we are uh, we have migrated all our internal project to it. So we are uh, doing good uh, amount of tests, and uh, yeah, it's pretty stable. So it could be, but it shouldn't be super difficult to migrate. But yeah, you know what? <laughs> it's always super difficult in some way. But it, mm, I mean. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How how, how long? Uh, uh, ten more minutes, something like this. So I think they will arrive in twenty minutes in a new session. Yeah. And uh, I mean, uh, yeah, it would be great to have you as a committer. And I think you should be, a, you should be able. To ah, yeah. You will get uh, also a discount on the ticket. <laughs> Attendee. <laughs> so, but when I read the committer, I read uh, I got a discount on the ticket, and that is what I get. <laughs> there is a mm, different fee, I think, for committers. But uh, yeah, the ticket got uh, really expensive in the late days, like thirteen hundred dollars. Hmm? I mean, uh, the ticket. Uh, 13 maybe uh -huh. which is still expensive okay yeah I think uh, I don't know what to